Hello, my name's Reverend Ginny Williams and I thought I'd record my address to save you having to read it. So who am I to be elected to General Synod to represent you? I'm in my third year of curacy at Sancroft Benefice of Churches, that's in rural North Suffolk, and I'm married with two teenage boys. I grew up in a small village not far from here called Framsden, and although I spent many years in Manchester, London and overseas, rural life, is in my blood. Not the idyllic Beatrix Potter style, but, uh, although I love that, uh, but the reality of living a long way from goods and services, working with people from all work, walks of life and being close to the natural world. What experience do I have then that uh, would make me a good candidate? The work I did before I was ordained was itself a calling. I was a nurse and health visitor and spent a number of years in Suffolk, in Ipswich, and along the coast in the Beckles area as a, as a health visitor. And in the 1990s, I specialised in tuberculosis. In that role, I initially worked in London, but then I went to Russia. And for the last seven years, I worked all over the world as a tuberculosis project director for the International Council of Nurses. TB often affects the poorest and most vulnerable in society, with the least access to care and treatment. I campaigned continually for improvement in patient care and investment in nursing, speaking at conferences and participating in strategic events and working groups. This should stand me in good stead for the meetings of General Synod. Negotiating solutions across various parties with different opinions and priorities has been a significant part of my working life. I'm prepared to speak up for myself, but more importantly, I'm compelled to speak up to ensure that all voices are heard. So what do I stand for? A tangible church presence in every parish. Having grown up with a strong faith, I sadly fell out of love with the church as a young adult. It took many years before I was drawn back in being no longer able to resist the call. Over the years, I've worshipped in churches of various shapes, sizes and traditions, as I always prefer to worship in the church closest to where I live. I will bring with me to General Synod a commitment to ensuring the Church of England continues to have a presence in every parish and strengthening the relationship between church and community to provide sustenance to all within and outside the church. A well-prepared and supported workforce serving the church and community is another thing that's very close to my heart. The pandemic has shown us the resilience within local communities to pull together and to look out for our neighbours. Indeed, it's given many of us the opportunity to work with others of all faiths and none. Following the challenges of the last few years and undoubtedly more heading our way, we need resilient communities with churches playing their part with strong local ministry, both lay and ordained. The move to a mixed ecology of worship traditions and communities has great potential, but it requires a strong leadership and team working. These teams need to be able to discern locally the best way forward. What will work in an urban or semi-urban setting may completely miss the mark in a rural area. As our diocese is largely made up of rural parishes, I want to see any church strategy taking full account of the rural context, both in terms of worship and of social concerns, such as transport, poverty and isolation. We need to find a balance between making church attractive and making it relevant to God's purpose. If it's relevant to God, it will be relevant to everyone seeking a closer relationship with God. So finally, I am committed to a church which is open and welcome to all. There will be some important votes coming up over the next term of the Synod, and I would see it as my responsibility to ensure that people in our local synods are kept aware of what's coming up. I've been giving careful thought to the House of Bishops report on same-sex marriage and the publications around living in love and faith. Personally, I struggle to be convinced of our right to deny faithful people access to marriage in the church. 
I appreciate that some people have strongly held opinions to the contrary and no one should be forced to participate in anything they feel would compromise their integrity. However, I currently feel that my own integrity is being compromised by not being able to offer people equal rights in a church which proclaims its welcome to all comers. So summing up, at a time of so much of upheaval, conflict and concern for things to come, we need to be a church with a banner of hope flying high, trusting in God and a better future where everything and anything is possible. That's faith, not naivety speaking. That is God's promise to us all. So if you like what you hear and think I can represent you, then please do put me high up on your list. Thank you for listening and my details, my contact details are on my election address and if you're curious to know who uh, nominated me that would be Reverend Canon Susan Loxton from Sancroft Benefice and Reverend Chris Charles from Gaisley. Thank you.